Hi, everyone. My name is Fred Martin. I'm a faculty member in computer science at the University of Massachusetts Lowell, and I'm the university representative to CSTA. Hi, I'm Pat Phillips, a member of the CSTA task force, along with Fred and several others, a retired CS teacher and editor of the CSTA voice newsletter. Uh, today, we're delighted to welcome Chris Stevenson, head of computer science education programs at Google, um, to our series of interviews about computational thinking. Our series is called Welcome to Computational Thinking. Uh, the goal of this series is to gain perspective on computational thinking by meeting with leaders and experts in the field. So uh, welcome, Chris. Um, would you like to start by telling us a little bit about your background and experiences, please? Sure, thank you so much, Pat. Um, I'm delighted to be here today. I think this is a really important topic and one that teachers are really interested in learning more about and teachers in all disciplines. So I'd like to thank CSTA for doing this. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the head of computer science education programs at Google, where my job is really to look and help shape Google's strategic engagement with all of the other partners and organizations working in this space. And absolutely, computational thinking is a big piece of what we're thinking about, what we're focusing on, and I think a very big driving force for uh, Google's view of uh, computer science education, but I'd also say education in general. Thank, thanks, Chris. Um, and the focus of our conversation is really about computational thinking. So maybe you can tell us a few words. How would you define computational thinking? I think I would define computational thinking first in kind of technical terms as the application of computing tools and techniques that help us understand and reason about systems and problems. You know, computational thinking is also supported by, you know, a body of theoretical and research knowledge and a set of, you know, powerful techniques, tools and concepts for analyzing, modeling, and solving problems. So that would be my kind of technical definition of computational thinking. Thank you, uh, Chris. I'd like to add to that a little bit. Um, um, how has your understanding of computational thinking changed over maybe the past three years? And if it has changed, um, how did it change? And, and why do you think those changes came about in your thinking? I would say that my understanding of computational thinking has has kind of bloomed and and I always kind of held the same kind of theoretical understanding of it. But what's really changed is my appreciation for its um, usefulness to to educators in every single discipline. And, and I really have to say that understanding has come from speaking with educators themselves who are specialists in their discipline and their fields and having conversations about, well, is this relevant to you? And does it connect to what you're trying to share with your students and how can it you know, enhance what you're teaching or how can it provide a different perspective or a different set of learnings for your students. So, so I'd really have to say that's a path I'm still moving along in terms of really understanding applications of, of computational thinking across all disciplines. And, and you know, my goal is really to kind of continue to grow by talking to the folks who really are the experts in, in learning in those, you know, a huge number of disciplines. Well, I have a bit of a follow-up question to that. Um, uh, and we hear this in our discussions with teachers and others uh, fairly often that, well, computational thinking is a lot like other kinds of thinking. Um, do you have some distinctions you like to draw uh, about computational thinking different from other thinking skills? Well, I'd have to say, for me, the best model of learning is scaffolding. And I think that's true for teachers as well. Let's start with what they know because they know a lot and let's figure out how to, how to teach new things starting from that point. So I would really validate teachers when they say, this is kind of like something else I've heard before. I think that that makes absolute sense to me. But, but you know, what I'd say is what distinguishes computational thinking from other common problem solving methodologies, you know, such as the scientific method or, or the engineering method, is, is that we look at the computer as the natural extension of or complement to these other methodologies. Um, and I think this is the foundation beyond, you know, which we're, we're often working with our, in, within our own disciplines. I think this is what we call CS plus X. It's the intersection between 
the power of computing as expressed through the knowledge of computational thinking and computer science and what's happening in terms of problem solving in all other disciplines. So I'd say that it's a situation of yes and. It is similar to because there are complementary elements, but it's this adding the power of the computer as part of the problem solving that really makes computational thinking distinct from the scientific method or the engineering method. I, I really like that explanation, Chris. It, it sort of it does indeed validate what teachers are already doing and and gives them a, a comfort level and a courage perhaps to push it a bit, as you say. Um, Brett, I think you're next. So I'm going to go off script, Chris. I know we have a script, but also this is supposed to be a conversation. So I want to respond to something that you said earlier in your last answer. You talked about all the different disciplines that are impacted by computational thinking. I was wondering if you might pick one that maybe would be surprising or um, or interesting in some way and, and, and give a concrete example of that. Sure. Um, absolutely, Fred. That's a great question. Um, I think for me, what I remember is what was most surprising to me. And I was at a conference where I saw a presentation on the use of computational thinking and the power of computing to capture native languages that are at risk of extinction because they were oral languages rather than written languages and finding a way to capture and save those for future generations. And to me, that kind of set off all kinds of lights. It wasn't something I'd thought of before, but when you think about using computing as part of the problem solving process across disciplines, that was just one that really excited me. Um, you know, it, it, the cultural importance of those kinds of solutions, I think cannot be underestimated. And the richness of bringing the culture of computing to the, the culture of the first peoples, to me, that was like the best of both worlds. And so that was just, that's the one example that's always stayed with me. Can, can you unpack that a little more? So how how was computing used to, in this linguistics application? Well, I think in a couple of different ways. Um, one is how do you, what kind of system of symbolization can you create to codify a language that has never been written? Mm -hmm. And so that was a piece of it. Then how do you collect all of this information and store it in a way that is accessible? So that's kind of the data piece of it. Mm -hmm. And how can it be used for analysis to in the future? That's the analysis piece of it. And then there's the automation piece of it, which is bringing the computer as a tool to facilitate the, the goal of the problem solving and the problem being how do we capture this language in a way that will live on for, for future generations. So I think that at each step of, the, of the, the work, there was an element of computational thinking involved. I mean, I'm sure that in their design of the solution for the symbolization and the data collection and analysis, I mean, they probably used algorithmic thinking and they, and they used um, iteration and they use you know lots of other other computational thinking concepts but for me what excited me was this bigger idea of of the richness of the problem and what computational thinking could bring to the solution space that's a really great example um, what I particularly like about the way you just described it Chris is this that it's the theoretical understanding but then you also described a practical a practical implementation so it was more than just the like the theoretical approaches of computing being brought to make sense of, of languages of native languages but it was also this um, design of a technological system that was actually put into service is that right yeah, absolutely. And also kind of what what I think I have to confess resonated with me is it was a way of thinking about it that I'd never thought about before. It was a way of looking at how we how we can take what seemed to be diverse fields and almost and, and find a way to meld the expertise of both in a way that both is complementary but also extends both fields. Right. Um, let's well. Let's go back to our script, um, and maybe we can um, use that example for this. This next question is: 
how um, how would you think about assessing computational thinking, and and what what sort of advice would you give to teachers who are trying to assess their students' computational thinking? I think this is one of the biggest challenges we face right now, um, and it's and it's not just in computational thinking; it's it's in all elements of computer science. Um, I think that that we need to to have a broad understanding of computational thinking and its application in a wide variety of disciplines and not limit it to computing. But it's also important that the, the subject specialists be engaged in helping the students understand and apply CT in the context of their discipline. And that's where we start running into challenges. Um, I'm not sure yet that we understand enough about how to measure computational thinking knowledge and learning, even in the small disciplines, and even in our own disciplines place of computer science, let alone across the curriculum in all kinds of other disciplines. So in a way, I kind of have to punt on this. I, I think it's really important. I think there's a little bit of interesting research that has to do with particular implementations or curricula, but this is one of those things that's part of the broader area of, of computational thinking and learning where we're behind in terms of research about really being able to pinpoint how students learn and whether or not they have learned. And, and I think we're just simply not there yet. I think there isn't an answer yet. There's little pieces, there's flashes of knowledge, but there isn't really anything comprehensive around which we could construct you know, a, a real framework for assessment yet. That kind of that leads into my next question for you, Chris. Um, we know you've been involved with lots of educational research projects, and so if you could may wave a magic wand and say, we should do this research about computational thinking, uh, would it be what you've just described for assessing it, or do you have some other ideas of what needs to be looked at related to computational thinking? I think the I think the potential for research in this field is just wide open. But I think it all comes back to something to a fairly simple premise, which is how do we know we're right when we think students have learned something? And how do we know what they should learn that is appropriate at a given stage of their intellectual development? Um, one example of this was that I was in, involved in, in a situation where a course that had traditionally been taught um, in grade 11 was moved down to grade 10 and was semesterized. And what they found that was really shocking is that the male students who took the course in the first semester did significantly less well than the students who took it in the second semester. Same teacher, same curriculum, same approach, everything. And what they surmised from this was that the students were really not intellectually ready to grasp abstraction at the conceptual level that was demanded by the course. But six months later, they were. And so that raised all kinds of questions that we don't have answers for. What are the prerequisites of knowledge building? And at what phase should we implement that learning because we know students are ready for it. And, and I think that's that's such a wide you know net that we need to ca cast in terms of research, but anything we could learn in that area, I think would be a great benefit to the discipline. We know a lot about, and there's been good good research going back to the late 80s about misconceptions student ha students have. We've got pretty good research on you know gen gender and, and, and equity issues. Um, but this kind of learning focused research is is an area where I see some real gaps, and I'd love to see some some really good, really good scientifically valid broad based studies that that teach us a lot more about this area. I'm thinking maybe you should take that on. You obviously were so excited in your description of it, Chris. <laughs> um, is is there anything else about computational thinking that you'd like to share with um, our group and the viewers? Well, I, I think that, that one of the things that is really important to talk about, because it's one of the major challenges, is Teacher, teacher preparation and teacher professional development in this space. Um, 
you know, we're looking at some marvelous initiatives now like CS for All that really are broadening our understanding of what kids need and providing equitable access and opportunities to kids in every school district. And I think this is absolutely critically important. In a way, when you think about computational thinking, it blows that up even further. Because suddenly we aren't just talking about a single discipline like computer science. We're talking about all teachers. All teachers who are, e even all teachers who are not yet teachers. You know, what do they need to know? What is, what is relevant for them? And, and how do they learn to build what computational thinking offers to their discipline in, into their programs? And, and I think that it's really important that, that teacher professional development for CT needs to be grounded in the, in the context of the teacher specific disciplines. I mean, one thing we know about professional development is you have to start where the teachers are to have this be a valid learning experience for them. So, you know, putting a bunch of elementary um, generalist cross curricular interdisciplinary teachers in with a bunch of advanced placement um, CS teachers and expecting everybody to learn about computer science in a way that is accessible and uh, and valuable to them is just not possible. So I think this that we really need to to think really broadly about what's needed for all teachers, what's appropriate for all teachers, and also think about not just the teachers that are teaching already, but also the next the next generation and the generation after that of, of teachers. And and I know for a lot of teachers, and especially those teaching cross, you know, in middle school or cross, you know, in cross disciplinary areas, we also have to make sure that it's not just one more thing they have to do. Right. And that, you know, they're too busy. You know, they are overwhelmed with change itis. So, I mean, it comes back to to really the beginning of our of our conversation where we talked about how do we make this real and relevant to the teachers so that they can understand how it enhances their learning goals for their students rather than it's just more one more expectation put upon them from outside and i think if it's done well it can be really really amazing i mean i was in a in a workshop for computational thinking for science teachers and at the end of the workshop, we, we had a, a conversation session, kind of a reflection session where we said, tell us facilitators why everything we said to you just feels like one more thing that you have to do or why this is a really bad idea. And we, I was so shocked because they said, no, we don't want to talk about that. We want to tell you what we've thought about and we want to talk among all of us about our ideas about how we could teach what we are currently teaching using this powerful tool in a way that would engage our students better, more directly, and would also teach them some additional concepts and learnings. And, and to me, that was like a, a, a teachable, a learnable moment for me, because I really understood that, yes, this is something they were really interested in, but they were interested because they saw it as a way to do more of what they want to do. And I think that's got to be part of our professional development as well. Thank you so much, Chris. I think this is a good stopping point. And uh, just reflecting on our conversation and, and your remarks, I, I felt really strongly that you fo you're focusing on the connections between computer science and computational thinking and every other field. And I really appreciate that perspective. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, Fred and Pat. Thank you both very much. Thank you.